All right, guys, so more regions practice. Um, this is question 29. Sue and Kathy are doing their algebra homework. They were asked to write the equation of the line that passes through the two points. Sue wrote one thing, Kathy wrote another. Justify why both students are correct. Okay, justify means I can use math and sentences. Why both students are correct. They are telling me both students are correct. So I know that. So I just have to show some work to back it up, okay? And this is exactly what you hopefully did on the quiz the other day. If you want to prove that something works, plug it into the equation. So first I'm going to start with Sue. She's got y minus 4 equals negative 1 third x plus 3. Well, I have two points, so I have to sub them both in. I have an x, I have a y. I have an x, I have a y. I've got to do this twice. Negative 3, 4. Sub in. 4 goes in for y. Negative 3 goes in for x. 4 minus 4. Okay, I can do that. Well, negative 3 plus 3, isn't that 0? Zero? 0 times anything, isn't that 0? So that checks. Now, I have to do it again. There's the equation for Sue, and now I have to use the point 6, 1. 1 minus 4 equals negative 1 third 6 plus 3. 1 minus 4 And then the right side, I'm just going to put that on my calculator. Why mess with that? I'm just going to do it right on my calculator. I'm going to clear that out and ignore that. Alpha y equals 1, negative 1 over 3 times 6 plus 3. I get negative 3. Oh, look, that checks. Okay, now I have to deal with Kathy. Here's her equation. I sub in the first point. Remember, that's an x, that's a y. Sub them in. And again, I'm just going to put some in my calculator. Alpha y equals 1. Negative 1 third times negative 3 plus 3. Oh, look at that. I get a 4. Do it again. My new point, 6, 1. Remember, that's an x, that's a y. Sub them in. calculator. Oh, look at there. So, justify why both students are correct. Both points work in both equations. And again, justify is a good word because that means all of this counts. All of this and my quick little sentence at the end all count as full credit. Okay? Question 30. <clears throat> During a recent snowstorm in Red Hook, New York, Jamie noted that there were four inches of snow on the ground at 3 p.m. There were six inches of snow at 7 p.m. If she were to graph this data, what does the slope of the line connecting these two points represent? Well, let's talk about these two points, okay? If we talk about this, what do we always say? Time equals x. So if I look at this, there were four inches of snow at 3 p.m. 
So at 3 p.m., there were four inches of snow. Now we also know at 7 p.m., there were six inches of snow. So they're asking me about the slope, so let me find the slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 6 minus 4, 7 minus 3, and that reduces to 1 half. Now look at your units. The 6 and the 4, those are measuring inches. What about the 7 and the 3? That's time, but I can't just write, it's not inches per time, it's inches per, well, what are the 3 and the 7? Those are hours. So now, what does the slope of the line represent? The slope represents that one inch will fall every two hours. All I did was calculate the slope and then explain what it is with the units. That's it, it's just another slope question. 31. The formula for the sum of the degree measures of the interior angles of a polygon is S equals that. Solve for N, the number of sides, in terms of S. I don't care what the formula means. Just go back to the basics. What are they asking you to do? Solve for N. So I need to get N by itself. S equals 180 N minus 2. That's what they gave me. Well, I need to get N by itself. Well, N is in parentheses, so I need to get rid of those parentheses. So I'm going to distribute. Okay, now just solve. You want N by itself. I have a minus 360, so I'll add 360. Now, this is S plus 360. Okay, they're not like terms. I can't actually put them together. All I can say is that S plus 360 equals 180N. It's the best I can do. Now, I still want to get N by itself. Well, right now I have a 180N. I just want N. Divide by 180. So everything gets divided by 180. S divided by 180 plus 360 divided by 180 is 2 equals N. And you're done. Okay, last question. We got to do some graphing. Okay. So now, g of x equals, not a problem here. I can put that on my calculator and graph it. y equals 1 half x plus 1. I'll go to my table. I'm going to graph some nice easy points. You get to pick what you graph. Don't do the fractions. Pick the easy ones. Let's see here. Negative 2, 0. I can do that one fit all this on here. Negative 2, 0. Um, 0, 1. 2, 2. And again, if you get a couple points, then you might see the pattern. Do you see how you're going up 1 and over 2 and up 1 and over 2? Oh, look it. I can keep that going. Okay. I'm going to connect them. I've got a nice line here. And I'm just going to label that G of X. Okay, so that one's not so bad. Here's the problem. Oh, and I should tell you, this is a part, uh, part three question. So this one's worth four points. So it is a little bit more work, but that's because it's worth four points. Every other question we've done, it was only worth two points. Okay, so now I have to graph this. This is our piecewise function. Split it up. 
I'm going to set up a table. I'm going to do that over here. If you look over here, negative 1 is when I switch from the top to the bottom. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I have negative 1 in my table, but I want some numbers after negative 1, and then I want some numbers before. Okay. Now if you look at this, where is the negative 1 included in the top or in the bottom? If you look at your inequality right here, the equal sign is part of the top, so negative 1 goes on the top. Now, what equation do I use for the top? 2x plus 1. So on my calculator, 2x plus 1. That's what I'm typing in here. And I'm going to go to my table. And I've got, let's see here, negative 4, negative 7, negative 3, negative 5, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 1. Okay, so when I graph those points, negative 4, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then negative 3, negative 5, 2. negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 1. And that right there, if you look at that, at negative 1, that's a closed circle. So those points get connected. Guys, I'm totally off the screen. I'm so sorry. If you look, the points in the table, that's just what I plotted. Negative 4, negative 7, that's right here. Negative 3, negative 5. Negative 2, negative 3. And then negative 1, negative 1. And that's where my closed circle is. And so then I just connected all those points. Okay? So that's the first part. Now I have to graph the second part. So what I'm looking at is that for the bottom equation, 2 minus x squared. So go back to y equals and I'm going to change that. 2 minus x squared and I want to go to my table. Now if you look at this, we have the point negative 1, 1. So I want to put that in my table. So I want negative 1, I'm going to squeeze that in, negative 1, and then positive 1 is the y-coordinate. Now look, at negative 1, that's an open circle there. Now, the rest of my table, I have the point 0, 2. That's on my calculator. So 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, negative 2, and let's see, maybe I can get one more, 3, negative 7, yeah, those numbers are getting a little crazy. I'm not going to do those. Okay. So what I have to do is I have to start at negative 1, 1, but that's an open circle. Look over here. That right there tells me it's an open circle. So I need negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. That's an open circle. Then I have to plot the point 0, 2. And then 1, 1 and then 2, negative 2, and then 3, negative 7. And I have to connect them. I start at my open circle, I went up, and then I came down. Very tricky question. Now, that I'm going to label as f of x because all of that came from f of x okay now look I think I believe if I recall correctly all of this was three points and then this question down here was one point one point how many values of x satisfy the equation f of x equals g of x explain your answer using evidence okay 
if I want f to equal g, that means I want my graphs to be the same. So what you're really looking for, when do your graphs intersect? That's what we're talking about. And if you look at this, I have my line and I intersect at one point. So there's only one solution. So how many values of x satisfy that equation? One, because there is one point of intersection. Very tricky question, but again, I think there's a lot of room there to get partial credit. I definitely think we can graph the line. I think we could set up a table and get part of that perhaps. Um, so there's definitely room there, okay? And again, it's only November. We don't have to take the regions until June. So we got time, all right?